Hello everyone. It's time for another tip of the week. I got many questions regarding what color do I use, how I use them, etc. So I think I will spend uh, this week and the next few tips uh, talking about how I go approach to colors and how I use them in watercolor. Uh, color can be very complicated uh, and the color theory can be uh, very boring, but I will try my best. So what do you see here, this chart, this is the, um, this has 12 colors. All these are the colors that's in my palette as my main, main uh, go-to colors. I have been using the exactly same group of colors in the past 10 or so years and it works for me. It may not work for you, but uh, uh, you know, that's how I'm going to explain to you, to you why I'm using this. Um, uh, this one is marked because I no longer use it. So you can ignore that. I put a name uh, under the uh, description of this video so you can check out the names. The brand is not important and I don't, associated with any uh, brand company. So I don't even uh, need to mention it here. So that's pretty much about the 12 colors I use. Mainly two yellows, two blues, two reds, and a few browns, and plus a uh, black. And, and there's an extra um, type of blues. My palette itself is exactly the same as this one. Let me show you. So here is my palette. You probably see in the other uh, tip as well. I blocked these because those are occasional colors and then I use them and take them out and keep them for a while and change them. So we don't need to really worry about it. So these are the 12 colors that I uh, constantly use. My name two yellows, two reds, and the two blues and two other extra blues and a uh, two a few bronze and plus a black so that's how i uh, use my colors um, i like to keep the palette extremely simple uh, but my main approach is to mix the colors directly on the paper and the utilizing the white paper plus the amount under control amount of water with the pigment to achieve my um, uh, desired colors to use uh, in the painting. And uh, so that's about the basics. And you can, again, you can look at the names in the description and those are uh, described all the color names I use here. For today's tip about the color, I thought I wanted to share uh, something about how to find the correct value for your color. We all know that when we paint, we are our eyes are attracted to the colors of the subject matter, then sometimes we get confused with how dark or light that color is, uh, which is what we usually call it's the value. So here you can see, this is a uh, simple still life, a few fruits. We all know that when we see it, here is a uh, orange with mainly yellow <clears throat> and this is a peach that's with mainly red and here is a kiwi that uh, it's kind of a brownish dark color but uh, when we actually paint what we really need to know is how dark or light this yellow is and where is the lightest yellow and where is the darkest yellow for the reds it's the same thing 
overhaul the red, but how dark or light the red needs to be. It determines where or whether the uh, end the results will look like a 3D peach. Okay, here uh, the kiwi is the same thing. So what I commonly uh, would suggest to other artists is to have a some kind of a chart like this. This is the one I made out of my black color. And you make your own into five smoothly transitioning shades of value. This one is straight out of black with the thickest paint. And this is one is diluted with the most possible water, get the lightest shade. And it's one shade darker than the white paper. So here is the white paper as the lightest value. And everything is uh, sequentially towards darker. So if you have this chart, what you can see is you can compare this one to what you look at your photo and at the end color of your uh, painting. For instance, if we say yellow, you definitely hear the yellow here is darker than the ones here. But we may notice that some other colors say here's more reddish, but instead we forgot that this is also darker uh, on top of a reddish yellow. So how dark is this or how light this is the lightest yellow is you can use this chart. See this one probably is here or even you can exaggerate it into the lightest as a paper. But on the other side, how dark this one is, you can see it's actually pretty dark. And if you look at the underneath shadow at this part, it's even darker. Okay. So the peach is the same thing. In general, the red is overall darker than the yellow. If you look at the palette, it's the same thing. You know, the yellow compared to the red, okay, their value. If you translate that one into the darkness or lightness uh, of the value. So in, in general, the peach overall is darker than the orange. However, the lightest red is actually probably somewhere there. And then um, the darkest red here is closer to that. And of course, there is a darkest uh, direct shadow underneath the peach. And you can see the light generates a very light shadow, which is as light as this one. But underneath here is a little bit of the darkness is almost there. It's in between this and the net. Okay. So that's very important before you even start painting anything. You want to identify overhaul who is the darkest, the uh, kiwi. Okay, who is the lightest? The background. So the background is probably closer to this one or in between this. And this part is where that. So you need to get some color that's closer to that in order to achieve is the darkest elements of the entirely three subject matter. And in between, they all have relationships. You see how dark this one is? We'll have something that's in between. If you just think yellow, you could paint this part as that one. Okay, so that's how I would suggest that you make your uh, own little tool to exam the photo reference or even better if you can exam the real still life I actually have a real still life over there <clears throat> and then afterwards if you have these values in mind then you can bring it to your mixture compare your mixture and bring to the painting Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next.